This video is presented by Sailrite. In this video we'll be showing you how to make an outboard motor cover with a sleeve in the bottom that includes a leech line to draw it tight. We're going to use umbrella fabric but you could use Sherlass fabric as well. Okay today we're going to show you how to make a kind of a simple motor cover and uh, for yardage wise to have a section of fabric big enough to do it with is um, you want to take the, your longest measurements that you can find from one edge of the motor to the other. So we'll go below a handle here and we'll go across catty corner. And we're showing that we want to have probably at least 39 inches because you're going to want to inch hem all the way around. We got 37 there, so the side ones are probably not quite as long. But that's okay as long as we have uh, 39 for our longest distance going from one corner to the other. We should have them plenty. So we're going to use a uh, fabric we'll cover it with for the patterning. So since we need 39 right around, 46 width fabrics fine. And then we have 37 in our other direction. We have 39 here too. So. Uh, around a yard and a half would be plenty to do a normal small motor, outboard motor. You want to have your fabric face up of what you're going to use because the way that we're going to tie it down with the handles and such, we're going to use with the handle down and then we're going to make a separate boot for the handle. And so then we're going to go ahead and put the fabric that we're going to use right over it and we're going to make a slit opening where the handle is and since we're going to kind of um, shape it to the motor so that it's not real super big we're going to put a couple of uh, seams on each corner we'll have a couple in the front and a couple in the back leaving the back one open for this handle and tying around the bottom of it so you want your fabric to be face up because your seams will be going to the inside, but we're going to be actually marking on the right side. When you have something that isn't centered, then you always have to, if you're patterning with your fabric, you want to make sure that where you're going to leave your opening is in the right place. If we were to pattern it on this side and flip it, then our opening would end up on the wrong side. So remember that this is the side that you're going to want to use. Okay, now you want to find kind of a center portion for the top of your motor and try to get your sides to where they're, they feel like they're going to go under where you want them, going straight down. Okay, then you can come right straight forward off of it, making sure you have enough in the same way off the back. Now you see in the back here we have a handle also on the back of the motor that we want to go down and around so that everything's covered above it. So we want to make sure that we have at least two inches below that. And then the front is hanging off the same way. Now what you want to do here is bring your fabric forward and then we will put some clamps on the corners. And you don't want to get them real tight but you want them to be somewhat tight on there because we're going to come up from the corners and then go down to get our corners a little bit fitting, like I said, but it will be a loose fit. So you get that corner, come over and get this corner, okay, and then just come on back here, and you will have extra in through here, which you want, because we're going to be putting a drawstring in the bottom. So it's just the top that you want to kind of uh, make a fit here. And that will kind of hold the cover on. Now we have our four corners. And we're going to come over to this corner. And we want to come down to that handle here to stop our seams. And then it will be open underneath of here to tie it up underneath. So what you want to do here is coming across from your corner, you want to make a line where that handle falls, coming off of both sides. That's where we're going to want to stop, right within that distance there. And there will be, like I said, plenty of extra and it will all get drawn in into the bottom of it. 
So now we come down through here and we'll come up to a, the point where you want to make your corner and just kind of mark on both sides of that where you want your point to come. This one will bring all the way up to the top. Same way with these in the front. And when you take your cover off and we start cutting, it's going to kind of look like it's whopper jawed, but that's only because of the different mechanisms coming off the motor. You'll be just fine with your distances, okay? Now, we'll come up here and just kind of fold over what we have pinched there. Okay, now we know where we want our front corner at. So, with a the clamp there, just take and fold it. And you can feel the fold from the other side and just kind of strike one mark and then going back over at the same spot you can feel feel for the other side and then we have one mark there now those marks are going to come right straight down from our dark corners that we have marked and like I said it will come out bigger at the bottom but the drawstring will fit that all in. Okay. Take this clamp down back here. Okay, and do the same with this one here now. You can feel where that seam is or the fold is. And the same here. Okay now in the back here we get our point marked here. But then on the underside, you want to come to your longest point, which we have a handle here and there. But this one is sticking out the furthest, so we want to bring our fleet down far enough that it will hit that, allow for that handle. We don't want to bring it clear into the motor. We want to cover up that handle and then it'll blouse underneath, so we want to make a mark where that handle's at. Okay, and then we'll go right straight down from there. We've got it marked where this handle here is, so we want our cleat over here. We'll stop sewing there, and then we'll show you how to finish, I'll show you how to finish that off also. So now we have all of that marked. Go around through the bottom of it, and have your top corners where you want those. Okay. And then just kind of hit a mark at where you know it's going to have to at least come down to because we're going to fare all the extra off. Kind of see where it folds underneath so we want it to go underneath there. These marks are just to ensure that we have enough fabric to wrap around the cover to insert our drawstring. So they're just like for I reference. Like I said, you can go longer. It doesn't have to be there, but we want it at least to be to that length there. And then this is coming underneath. Okay, now we have all of our markings that we need. Just like one, two weeks, take your clamps off at this time and we know the back from the front because of the marks that we put for our handle that we're going to stop sewing at okay so then we take the fabric off and this is kind of what you're going to have okay you can see where your corners are and where we want to be so go from this top corner darken it a little bit for you okay so you want to go from that point to this point and this is the back where we're going to stop at the handle so we're going to fair line there okay and then we want to add a half inch inside of the line 
for our seam line. And you want to use some kind of a chalk or something that'll come right off of the cover. Won't make a real permanent spot. Okay, now you want to draw in your half inch line and bring it clear to the bottom edge. Just go right straight off the edge with your half inch marks. Come back up to this side all the way off the edge. Okay, so we don't need any of this fabric in here. So we're gonna be cutting that out on each corner. And that's all you need to do here is just keep going on, drawing in your corner marks. Okay, and a half inch. Okay, now we've got all of our corners drawn in, and we're going to be cutting on the inner seams, giving us our half inch seams for the outside. So we'll cut those four corners out, but before we do that, you see we've got our little notch lines as to how long we want to have it turn out at least. So we'll come down and measure one of those, and this is at 13. So we want this point is going to come together here, so we want that to also measure down 13. Put over here. Okay. Measure this one down. 13. Okay, so we're going to want to add about an inch to that just so that we have plenty for our line to run through the bottom to add. So we're adding our inch to the bottom of that. So we'll end up with 14 here, 14 here. Okay, and then come right straight down from your point and mark it also at 14. And then you can just kind of fare that off to each other. This is all going to be hemmed, so we're going to just kind of cut it like so. All right. All four corners will be done just like this. This one's falling at 12 and a half. So we're going to add another inch and make that for 13 and a half. Okay, so we want to come back over here, make sure we're at 12 and a half, and we're going to make an extra inch for the 13 and a half. Not all the corners are the same, you'll notice that, so you'll put the lines, uh, depending on where your scratch marks are, all around the sides of your cover. The part on each corner that she's marking inside this pleat area will actually be discarded, but Deb likes to mark it so that she can mark the exterior lines to match those. We'll keep doing this to all four of the corners, then once the lines are joined up in the corners, we'll join up the lines between each one of those corners as shown here with those red lines. These lines that we're fairing at the uh, circumference of the cover are not too crucial. We'll be installing a drawstring down there, so don't worry if they're a little bit off from the original marks. Okay, now the handle that sticks off the back, we're gonna also show you how to pattern that. Now, uh, you can, if you'd like, and wanna just make a bonnet cover, you can actually make the cover for that also, but it's a lot easier just to make a little boot cover to go over it. So all you want to do is just take your longest length, which is 18 on here, to go under the knuckle type bend that it has, okay? And then you've got quite a wide area from here, and then this also takes sort of a turn. So you want to give yourself a little bit extra. So on this particular one, I would say you want to go at least four inches. So we'll take the measurement four by 18, and we'll add an inch to the width, which will make five. 
and then we want to put a hem with a drawstring on the bottom here so we want to add an extra two inches to that so we're going to make it five by twenty cover okay so we had twenty inches for our width or our length of our handle once we added on for our hems so we want to double that and to forty okay so that's going to be our overall length and we're going to fold it in half to make it the length of the handle. And then we just need to strike a line. On the fabric. And then we want to do our four inches plus the one inch for the seam. So we're doing a five inch wide by, it's actually five by 20 on this one. Or 40, I'm sorry. Break your five inch line. Okay, and then the length of it's 40 inches. You need to cut off the length of it here. Okay, and then also we're going to go down two inches and make a mark because we're going to fold that in so that we have a finished edge where our cord is going to come out at, okay? So you want to go up to the opposite end also and mark that at a two inch. That way we know where to fold it over. And then we're going to go ahead and hot knife cut these out and then we'll show you how those sew, sew them up. We like to cut some Brilla fabric out with a hot knife because it helps to prevent the fabric from unraveling. It seals the edge of the fabric, so you won't have to worry about it unraveling. However, you can cut it out with scissors or pinking shears if you like. If you don't have this professional hot knife, you could use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun as well. It looks a little bit odd, but that's because the uh, motor is a little bit oddly shaped, so don't worry about that. Okay, now we have our marks on this side, and we're going to start with the one that has the handle cut out to where we're just going to sew down two of the lines. So once you pull that over, we're going to sew our half inch seam in here, and make a mark to the out inside where we're going to be sewing at, and we want to back stitch here, then we're going to open it and hem the rest of it open. We'll be sewing a half inch from the raw edge. You can see here we're using that magnetic sewing guide to keep our stitch a half inch away from the edge. And here we are coming to that mark. And we reverse the beginning and reverse at the end here. Okay, all the rest of the seam to just sew right down to the end, but this is the one that's going to be open. So, you want to open it up, and then you'll take your half inch and make a half inch hem rather than the seam. So, fold this in. It is not necessary to use the magnetic guide, however it can be helpful. If you don't have that, you could put masking tape down on the base of your sewing machine and use that to guide your work. Okay, and then I hemmed up that side. I'm just going to take a couple back stitches at the bottom before they're stitches stop for the seam. And turn it and finish out the hem. You want to do this first because you don't want to close out your pocket that we're going to make for our drawstring. You want a finished edge there. For the other three corners, you just want to sew down their entire length from the beginning at the top here at the corner and do some reversing all the way to the end. Now we didn't show the other 
uh, two being done, but those were done previously. We're just showing the last one. So do that same procedure to the other three corners. Okay, so now we have our cover all finished in here with the opening at the handle side. And what we're going to do here is put in a drawstring. Okay, we have the leech line here. You want to make kind of a knot in it so it's not going to pull through your pocket. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go around and we're going to put a one inch hem all the way around here and closing in our line. That way we don't have to worry about fishing it through once it's all sewn up. You'll notice the cover is wrong side out. You could use double-sided tape to pre-base this hem. You could use pins, you could use staples, or you could crease it prior to taking it to the sewing machine. Deb's just going to do it all by hand. These edges do have some shape in them because we fared the line, and you can see wrinkles. That's normal. We'll get a few pleats here because it is rounded edge, and it's got to take in some of that. Just keep it complete itself as you go or you can work it in however you want to. Those pleats or wrinkles in the hem are only visible on the inside of the cover. You won't see them on the outside of the cover. Just try to work about a 6 to 12 inches ahead of yourself. That way you're not going to run off the edge or not get it quite the size you want it. You can uh, thumb fold this at, uh, at the beginning if you want to crease it so that you know exactly where you're going to fold it to or you can strike a line as to where you want to hold it up to. But on a cover like this, they're uh, a little bit big cover so it should have plenty of extra the way that uh, you take your longest measurement and do your measurements from that as we were showing you in the video. Plus we added our inch to the outside for our hem here. We're going to skip ahead here to the end of that sleeve opening. Back stitches. Okay, and then you want to tie a knot on this end too, so keep it from running through. You can make a stitch back here in the center, that way you know it's not going to go anywhere at all. Come up to one of these seams here, and you can just stitch right through your hem with your line inside, that way you're sure that it's not going to pull through your hem. Okay, and then we're going to go on to the handle sleeve. Okay, so we've got our notches here where we want to make our little bit of a hem. Those are those soapstone pencil marks that we marked previously. That way we have a finished edge there for our fold for our line to run through. This will be Same the opening for the sleeve that includes the leech line. This little fold over that we're creating now on that same edge will make the edge be him rather than raw. We have our little hems on the edges here now. We're going to sew a half inch down this side for right now and then leave this open till we get our line put in. So we sew our half inch seam starting at the top, back stitching. Right You'll notice here that Deb is not using the magnetic guide. It's really not necessary, but it definitely helps to aid in your guiding the fabric. Opening it up with that side still open. The inside surface is facing up. Top edge and hold it down. And then we'll seam that inside. It's a lot easier to hem this before it gets the other seam put together. Okay, 
Okay, now bring your sides together and we're going to start sewing it underneath of our hem here where there. it's paired off from the hem. And do it with your half inch seam again, doing some back stitches at the top. Run right down the side. Okay, and then we'll turn this right side out. Turning a bag like this that's quite small right side out can be quite the job. But just uh, take your time and you'll get it done. And we'll show you how the covers fit. Okay, so now we've got our covers turned and we're going to put them on the motor and see how they fit. Got our slit here to the back. As mentioned earlier, when Deb says okay. back, it's actually the front. Take your top, fit it to where you had it fitted from. And then you just kind of take your leech line or whatever you're using for your tie inside your hem. Kind of push it up toward the center, gathering it in. When this umbrella is brand new, there's a lot of stiffness to it. It Same will soften up side. over time. Another great fabric to choose for motor covers is called Surelast. Surelast is a 100% polyester with a urethane coating. It has good UV resistance, but not as good as Sunbrella. Surelast fabric We're has two advantages over handles. Sunbrella. It's more abrasion okay, resistant, here. and it is also a lighter fabric. Pull that tight. that it's underneath the lip and around. Both Sunbrella fabric and Sherlass like fabric are both a water resistant material but yet very breathable. Handle. That's kind of important for applications we'll like this because you don't want moisture to build up inside of your cover. Tuck that inside this slit. Deb's not going to take the time to tie this tie appropriately, but she's just showing you how it fits. You can tie them separate, tie them at the same time. And now our motor cover is now complete. This is a quick and easy way to make a moderately fitting cover that will do a great job of protecting your outboard motor. I'm Eric Grant with Sayerite. Thanks for watching this video. Bye bye.